Hi everybody, welcome to the introduction to the Spud Blog video edition. Thank you for joining us. I'm Todd Langwell, but you can call me Spud because of the close, intimate relationship that we share with one another. <clears throat> for five years, the Spud Blog has worked hard to inform, entertain, and enrage people just like you. And now we are proud to carry on that tradition in a brand new 100% natural video format, guaranteed to be pesticide and hormone free. What I'd like to do today is to give you a little preview of what you can expect in the Spud Blog. What is the Spud Blog? What do we talk about? Well, there is no central theme, but mostly we like to talk about Pez dispensers, which communist leader looks most like which Smurf? the emotional needs of insects, that sort of thing, you know, the standard fare. But we do occasionally like to dabble in political and social issues. A few of my favorite topics include the historic failures and innate evils of centralized government. And in that vein, I probably spend way, way, way too much time talking about Leon Trotsky, who would be my hero if I were a communist, which I'm not. But Comrade Trotsky believes strongly, as do I, that the influence and welfare of the individual is diminished in direct relation to the shift of governmental control from the local level to the central. That shift is one of the most rapidly developing trends in our nation, and is a trend that should give you serious pause. I like to try to remind people of the importance of the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution is our nation's highest law. It is also one I maintain our government wantonly violates on a regular basis, in ways ranging from how we go to war to the powers the federal government assumes, which are not enumerated in the Constitution. Among my favorite subtopics here is the FISA Amendments Act of 2007, wherein Senators McCain and Obama took turns stabbing your Fourth Amendment right to privacy as it lay bleeding on the rotunda floor. That is a perfect lead-in to what I have come to understand as the charade of American two-party politics, a subject sure to rile up both you Republicans and Democrats alike. A formula has developed in this country that goes something like this. Frighten your constituents, polarize your constituents. Pander to your constituents. Arm them with catchy phrases and the means to attack the character of their ideological opponents. And then do whatever the hell you want because absolutely no one is paying attention to the substance of your actions. Of course, you will occasionally need to throw out some more polarizing propaganda while blaming all the present problems on the actions of your ideological enemies. But maintenance-wise, that's hardly a bother. Look, if we are even to begin to solve our nation's present ills, I believe it must come from honest discussion and compromise rather than pointing fingers and fighting each other to the ideological death with vitriolic, meaningless rhetoric. There has long been a complete lack of what I consider to be honest dialogue in this country, and I believe that should and must change. Of course, there's the criminal irresponsibility of continuing to run up a national debt that your children could never pay off in 10 lifetimes. That's one of my faves. Oh, another one of my favorite subjects, the detrimental rise of soulless corporatism in America. And along with that, the fraudulent fleecing of America by the Federal Reserve System and the corporate corruption of the American media. Listen, I stand by what I've been saying for years, that in a way, the people of the Soviet Union had a leg up on modern-day America because at least they realized what they were reading in Pravda was complete crap. I believe Americans need to take a much more critical look at the motivations of their media. I frequently speak out against ideological and intellectual intimidation and the politics of character assassination. Along with that, institutional arrogance. I'm also a frequent critic of gratuitous consumerism. Let me say that again. Gratuitous consumerism, materialism, and American entitlement. I understand that this is an extreme example, but if you're driving a new Range Rover, you take more than two vacations a year, you've hardly worked a day in your life, and you still have the unmitigated balls to be envious of someone else, I'm going to suggest your gym rat ass be shipped off to Ethiopia to live in an effing dirt floor hut for a year 
where you'll struggle by in abject poverty and squalor under the constant threat of being slaughtered by your Muslim neighbors. See, if I were emperor, there would be a lot of that going on, and you should be damn glad. Damn glad I am not emperor, because the party would be over for a lot of you people. For instance, people who work in public unions could actually be fired for doing a crappy job. Wouldn't that be crazy? Just like people in the public sector. Huh. Be nuts. Bankrupt financial institutions would be allowed to fail in favor of someone with a responsible business model that doesn't include the 20-fold leveraging of assets. It would be a crime to knowingly expose your ass crack in public. To that end, my one socialist edict would be a single-payer belt program. There'd be no protections on the sugar industry, and corn would once again have to be used as, well, corn. Environmentalists would be club silly by National Guardsmen as they protested my drilling for oil up and down the California coast. Of course, being compassionate, I would personally go to the hospital and try to explain that while we are working to replace petroleum with alternative fuels, the risk of spilling a little oil is well worth being free from dependence on Saudi Arabia, which is arguably the most repressive and totalitarian regime on earth. I think people forget that Saudi Arabia is a nation with no freedom of religion, zero rights for women, zero democracy, and of course is the birthplace and continued exporter of Wahhabism, a doctrine followed by such warm and fuzzy groups as Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, whom we are currently fighting to the bitter death in the godforsaken mountains of Afghanistan. The military-industrial complex would hate me because I would only purchase military equipment that my military commanders actually wanted and needed, as opposed to the current system of building things based on which representative has the raw political power to blackmail Congress into awarding their district a contract. The Chinese would hate me because after chopping the size of the federal government in half, I would use the savings to promote the actual manufacture of goods in America. This means we would have to buy far less Chinese crap and would actually be creating real jobs for Americans who would then also be able to buy a coffee maker that lasted more than three months. What Walmart would do, I have no idea. I assume they would adapt. Yes, it is indeed fortunate for everyone that I don't aspire to be emperor, nor any kind of political leader for that matter. What I do aspire to do is to get people talking, whether they agree with me or not. And by talking, I mean discussing things rationally. Of course, this means getting people to abandon the current system of, you're an idiot, that guy's an idiot, etc., etc. I find it ironic that the people who spend the most time talking about tolerance often tend to be the most intolerant people I know when it comes to dissenting opinion. Listen, I don't believe in sacred cows. I don't believe in political correctness. And I don't believe in ideological intimidation. What I do believe in is America and awakening the political strength of common men and women who for too long have been alienated from their unique right to government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And ladies and gentlemen, we are the people. Your representatives are your public servants. They are your employees. They are not your overlords. I beg of you, for the sake of your nation, for the sake of your children and your children's children, to take back your right to hold your government accountable. This may mean being a tiny bit more accountable for yourself, but I guarantee you in the end it will be worth it. Well, we're going to wrap it up with that little preachy part there, and I hope that gives you some idea of what to expect from the Spud Blog, and I hope you'll join us again next time when our topic will either be Cheese doodles, food of the gods, you decide, or a discussion on my impending semi-annual haircut. <clears throat> Until then, for the Spud Blog, on behalf of the entire Spud Blog staff, this is Spud, thanking you for joining us. <laughs>